Hello and welcome to Fresh per Perspectives. Um, we have a guest from the Resource Center with us today. We have Steve Watterson, the Public Relations Director of the Resource Center. And um, first I'm going to ask you about, is there anything new? Oh, there's always stuff going on new at the Resource Center, absolutely. Um, I mean, you've obviously worked there a very long time as well, Gail. I've been there 20, a little over 23 years I now. was there for 21 years. Wow. So we have a long history uh, at yeah. TRC. And I used to work with you. I used to write articles. For the newsletter, For yep. the newsletter, and, uh, and I was even on the editorial team for a while. I was there the day that, uh, remember when Michael Raymond died? Yes. I remember I was there the day that we had to pick out a picture to publish of him in the newsletter. Yeah. I remember everybody unanimously agreed on the same one, one because picture. it was such a good picture. Yeah. And for those who don't know, Michael Raymond was the executive director of the Resource Center back in the 70s and 80s. Right, right. So yes, no, things are, are very well. For you know, people who don't know, uh, I think a lot of folks in the community probably are aware that the Resource Center supports um, individuals with uh, developmental intellectual disabilities and their families. Um, but we also provide uh, health services that are available to anybody, whether you have a disability or not. So, you know, the primary care, uh, dental services, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, mental health counseling. Um, I, my uh, primary care physician is one of the doctors at the Resource Center. It's kind of convenient to have oh, your doctor really? be where you work, absolutely. Uh, what doctor is that? That's Dr. Adnan Munir. Oh, is he from, from India? Jamestown, from Jamestown. I think he's from Pakistan. Pakistan. Yep. Yep, and then um, in addition to that, we have a, a very vibrant and uh, robust uh, manufacturing uh, operation. We have uh, manufacturing facilities in Jamestown and Dunkirk and Buffalo. So uh, the Resource Center does a lot. We're, I believe, the second largest employer in Chautauqua County. I think there are more than uh, 1,600 people on TRC's payroll. That includes uh, several hundred people with disabilities who have jobs uh, at our, uh, our manufacturing facilities. Um, the staff, the Resource Center staff, get a lot of really good training, too. Absolutely, you have to. I mm -hmm. mean, you really have to. Um, a lot of the work that our uh, staff perform uh, is involves caring for individuals who have pretty, can have pretty severe disabilities. So um, s staff go through uh, about a two-week training regimen before they even begin work, so they are, uh, can learn everything that they need to know about working with this very uh, specialized uh, population of, of uh, what can be you know, vulnerable individuals who have a lot of uh, health care needs and, and need to be uh, treated uh, with uh, you know, the utmost uh, care, uh, respect, and compassion. Yeah, I remember uh, we used to uh, have to be trained on what to do if somebody became a danger to themselves or somebody else. And I thought of that, I've been thinking about that a lot recently, ever since that uh, one man um, was smothered in New York when the cops were restraining him. Oh, right. That one that was in the news, Eric, yeah. I can't remember the man's last name, and he kept saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And sure enough, he smothered and died. And um, I remember when we were trained at the Resource Center, we were trained never, uh, what was it, a um, couple minutes or something, never to restrain anybody. And yeah, I'm you, not sure. I don't, I've, you, in my position, I don't have to go have through to that training, but sure. But we were also told to keep an eye on the person to make sure that there was nothing going on like right. that, that they were getting enough oxygen yeah. and everything. And I thought, well, you know, those police should have had that training. I think they do. And, you know, I think... Um, yeah, or they sh maybe they did and, you know, they... Yeah, but yeah, something went terribly wrong. Yeah, I, I think you can never be overtrained. You know, lots of yeah. times people maybe uh, need refreshers on things, and, and that's what we do. We have annual training at the resource center right. that uh, you know, kind but of refresher and make sure everybody knows what they should be doing in a given situation. But I couldn't. I just couldn't help but think of that because of um, hearing that they that that guy died because. Right. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Yeah. But um, you know, the resource center we were we started in 1958. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it was started by a group of parents who wanted a better life for their uh, loved ones who had mental retardation. I'll, I'll say something now for our, our listener, our viewers and listeners so they know the word retard and retardation are no longer acceptable terms because that word carries such a big stigma around right, it. So right. instead of saying mentally, mental retardation, we now say intellectual disability or cognitive disability. Oh, okay. Okay, so people At one time, that. I know it was being referred to as developmental yep. disabilities. Yeah, we say intellectual and other developmental disabilities now is a term. Mm -hmm. But we started in 1958, uh, thanks to some parents and the Chautauqua County Medical Auxiliary, who uh, really fought to get uh, opportunities for people with disabilities. You know, back then, the public school systems didn't have to take in uh, children who had severe disabilities. So a lot of folks were spending their lives at home, uh, isolated, with no opportunities to get an education or to work. And uh, we started uh, providing services in January of 1959. We had a, uh, a classroom setting in the morning and then a work uh, training session in the afternoon. I think there were nine people that mm -hmm. were in that, wow. uh, that initial class. <laughs> and uh, from that, uh, you know, we now, the Resource Center, provide services to more than a thousand people with all different kinds of disabilities here in Chautauqua County. Yeah, that's a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember when I first started working there, um, a lot of the guys were the ones, that was I think it was 1979, and a lot of the guys had come from the mental institutions back then. Yeah, the developmental centers, you know, the Willowbrook is the famous one right, that people would right, know about, but right, right. Um, they uh, made a push in the 70s and 80s to close those facilities and uh, make it possible for individuals with disabilities to live in their home communities. And so you saw uh, agencies like the Resource Center that started opening up a lot of homes and uh, people that had been uh, sent off to live in institutions when they were younger were able to come back to their home communities and, uh, and live uh, with their, uh, their neighbors. Yeah, I remember, um, I remember when I was working at that one group home in Westfield, it was the first one that was in Westfield, and uh, I remember there was one of the residents that lived there referred to those of us who had never been institutionalized as the outside people. <laughs> wow. So I guess that was what they called people that weren't in the mental institutions hmm. when they lived there. Wow. Outside people. Outside people. Yeah, I've not heard that before. Really? No, no, hmm. never heard that term. So you, uh, you worked at the Resource Center from when? When were, what years were you there? Um, we started in 1979. Okay. I guess I must, must have been there till just about 2000. Okay. Gotcha, yeah, and I started in 93, so we overlapped for a little while. For a while, yeah. Yeah. No, uh, the Resource Center, the, one of the big things going on now is the state and federal governments are really changing the ways that services are delivered to people with disabilities. Um, you know, for many years, uh, if you had a, a diagnosed developmental disability, um, you would have your, uh, you could live in a group home like mm -hmm. the Resource Center operates. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to a day program or a work program and have uh, most of the services and supports that you needed you know, provided for you. Um, the government is now making a push to try to change the way those services are delivered and uh, they want to be able to uh, assess each person and kind of make a decision on okay you will give you X amount of dollars and you can choose the services that you want mm -hmm. to receive. And um, this is going to be, I think it'll be wonderful for some people. It, it probably will very much enhance their independence mm -hmm. and their ability to live the lives that they want to be able to live. Uh, our concern is that uh, there are a lot of individuals and their families who maybe have gotten used to the f way services have been provided for the last few decades, that if they're not paying attention, some of those services could get yanked out from underneath them and uh, we're, we don't want to take a step backward to where people with disabilities are, are back at home again, uh, not being able to access the, uh, the services and supports that they need to be able to yeah. live full independent lives. There was something that I heard on the radio recently um, where some places are wanting to shut down their uh, workshops which I don't think is a good thing. That's really a bad thing. They need, they need that. Absolutely. There's a, there's a push again uh, from the state and federal governments 
to try to get uh, people with disabilities out into the community working. They would be, and wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody, whether you have a disability or not, could have a full-time paid job in the community? Um, that is not realistic for everybody. And um, you know, to your point, uh, not everybody with a disability either A, wants to work out in a community-based mm -hmm. job, because some people are, are more comfortable working uh, at our work centers, uh, what they would call sheltered employment. Right. Um, or uh, B, they're, they're not maybe capable of working a 35 to 40 hour full-time position. And, or C, there aren't enough jobs in the community for them. So uh, right. you know, our concern is that if you force people with disabilities out of a work center environment and f only have paid employment as an, as an option, if they can't get a job, then what do they do? So right. we want, at the very least, want to be able to have uh, our work programs at our work centers available for the folks who want to continue working there, but also for people who go out and they try uh, competitive employment out in the community. If it doesn't work for any reason, they can come back into the work center and have a job and maybe be able to work there until they decide on what next community-based job they want to give a try to. Um, there's been a lot of uproar about the plan to close the workshops uh, completely and uh, the state has come around and is lessening its uh, insistence on that but it's still while uh, wanting to make sure that people get a chance at community-based employment and that would be the preference that uh, work centers such as those operated by the resource center could continue to operate. Yeah, I, I hope they keep operating because I think it would be a big mistake to close it down. Yeah, they, the other thing is they, uh, I think one of the arguments from the government side is that a work center uh, employment situation, they would consider it segregated. Now at our work centers, uh, because of the uh, work that we do for the federal government, uh, we have a lot of non-disabled people who work there and a lot of our staff are non-disabled. So we feel that we're already uh, pretty integrated work setting, but uh, the state is going to m mandate that uh, work centers like ours uh, throughout the state uh, do more to become fully integrated. And it's going to be a challenge, but um, you know, we're, you know, fortunately we're already doing some of the things that the state wants to do, uh, but I believe by uh, January of next year we have to come up with a plan to, uh, to address the, uh, the concerns that uh, the state has uh, moving forward with keeping work centers open. Oh. Well, I wish you good luck on well, that. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you, you know, I mean, everybody, when you meet somebody new, one of the first questions you ask once you get past their name is, what do you do for a living? So everybody wants to work. Mm -hmm. Just about everybody wants to work. And uh, the people with disabilities at the resource center take tremendous pride in work and getting that paycheck every week. And uh, that means a lot to them. It means a lot to everybody. And uh, you don't want to be in a situation where you take somebody's sense of self-worth and value away from them by, by not having them be able to have a job anymore. Right, right. It's, it's a good thing. Uh, it's better than just having them hang around the house all the time. Absolutely. That's not good for anybody. Right. Yeah. Now, tell us about some of the products that you make at the Resource Center. Which you brought a couple of examples with you. I did. I left them off camera, so <laughs> we, someone else will have to come fetch them. But um, you know, we do a lot of yeah. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of subcontracting work. So uh -huh. we do that for uh, local industry. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard of Whirly? Whirly, they're I think, based out of Warren, Pennsylvania. They make uh, the plastic to go drink cups. Oh, oh, yeah. And they uh, have uh, people with disabilities at uh, agencies like the Resource Center throughout Pennsylvania and New York who make them. And uh, so we've been assembling stuff for Whirly. We make, thank you very much, we make uh, toolbox covers for Matco Tools. Um, we assemble uh, boxes. We do a lot of work for local industry. But for about 40 years, we've also been doing work for the federal government. Started off with making wooden tent stakes and mosquito netting. And when uh, conflicts over in the Middle East started in the early 90s, we started getting into other types of products. So when the first Gulf War took place in the early 90s, we, made, uh, we sewed the camouflage helmet covers that American oh. forces wore over their helmets. Um, we made these um, giant bags that uh, were called air cargo bags that you would put, uh, pack a big box full of relief supplies and drop them by parachute from planes into uh, war-torn areas that you couldn't get supplies to safely otherwise. 
Um, and we got a lot of, quite frankly, got a lot of publicity about the fact that we did those things. And when the second uh, Iran war, Iraq war, excuse me, started in 2003, every Marine who crossed over into Iraq from Kuwait at the start of that war carried with him or her a first aid kit that the uh, products inside that first aid kit were assembled by people with disabilities at the resource center and the kit itself uh, the, the pouch that it was in was sewn by people with disabilities. And those first aid kits actually saved a lot of lives and we had some Marines come to our work center in Jamestown a few months later to thank uh, the workers for the work that they've, that they've done to save lives of uh, America's uh, fighting forces overseas. But we, uh, we literally make 200 different items for the military. A lot of it is, um, is uh, sewn product like pouches. So I brought a couple of things with me. I don't know which way to hold it. This is, um, it's called an E-tool. E stands for entrenching tool. It really, uh, entrenching tool is a shovel. So it's for a collapsible shovel that, uh, that the soldier could uh, have attached to uh, his or her It looks like his outfit. belt or something? Yeah, we yeah. make, uh, we make a, the, the, the vest that they wear and the, it's all components now. So mm -hmm. they can um, you know, either Velcro or snap on uh, different uh, components that they're going to need on any particular day when they're going out, uh, depending what their, their mission is that day. So it's pouches uh, for holding, uh, you know, hand grenades. Um, this item that I brought with me is a machine gun barrel case. So you have two machine gun barrels. When one gets too hot to use anymore, you set it in this case and then use your other one. So and these are just a couple of samples of literally 200 products that we make for the military. Um, does Bob Schifano still work there? Bob does. Bob officially retired um, in December, but he still is doing some part-time work for us. Oh, but, good, good. But yeah, Bob, a longtime employee at the Resource Center, involved in a lot of the uh, research and development of some of the products that we make. I remember when I worked at one of the group homes uh, in Jamestown that I took people to Bethel Lutheran Church on 3rd Street in Jamestown. And uh, Bob was a member of that church, so, so we used to see him in church all the time. Yeah, I think, you know, we see a lot of, uh, I, I think, in the, uh, you know, we're talking in the old days, uh, people with disabilities were kind of segregated from the rest of society, mm -hmm. and that's just not the case anymore. So you see individuals with disabilities at, at your churches, shopping in grocery stores. Um, the people that the Resource Center supports take a lot of pride in uh, giving back to the community. So we volunteer at a lot of, uh, a lot of different places. We were talking previously, you know, delivering Meals on Wheels, um, working at the Humane Society, helping out with the animals. Um, you know, really dozens of places uh, in the community giving back uh, to, uh, to local not-for-profit agencies that, that need some volunteer support. And they take a lot of pride in doing that. Yeah, I remember when I took them to Bethel Lutheran Church, the church uh, started a Sunday school class for the group of people that I brought. And uh, they enjoyed that. They enjoyed attending the coffee hours afterwards, uh, which were only about once a month, not every week. But, right. uh, um, <clears throat> and they enjoyed socializing with uh, all of the other church members. And uh, I, I remember I used to get the guys lined up, uh, volunteered, to take turns uh, with the other members of the church to um, greet people for greeting people at the door. That's and, great. And uh, sometimes we'd sponsor one of the coffee hours where we'd bra uh, bring the cookies and things that they had at the coffee hours. And it was a lot of fun and they really liked it. That's great. You, you know, you raise an interesting point too. It can be a lot of fun working at the resource center. You know, there aren't a lot of jobs where you're, <laughs> you know, you're getting paid to go out and uh, take people shopping, take them to <laughs> church, you know, take them out volunteering. Uh, so yeah, it can be, it can be a lot of fun it's, working here. It's, uh, it's a chance to be creative. It's a job that you can be creative with. Absolutely. And, and that was what I liked about it. Uh, yeah, so. you're right. Then the creativity of staff uh, plays such a such a big role in uh, in the uh, the development of uh, of the folks that we support. You know, if you're out there uh, wanting to engage with them and do stuff with them and get them out in the community doing things, um, they're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. And you know, the benefit is that the community is going to have an opportunity to meet some people and become friends with some folks that they may not have had a chance to interact with otherwise. Yeah, the Chautauqua Lake. Um 
a snowmobile right. club used to invite them out for snowmobile rides every winter. I don't know. Do they still do that? If they do, I don't know. But I remember going out that one time and taking yeah, pictures. Yeah, that, that was when I met you the first yep. time was you came out to take pictures. And... Uh, yeah, they had a lot of fun. They loved riding around on those snowmobiles, and then they'd uh, the pe uh, people that were members of the snowmobile club they'd serve refreshments right. and things. And that was wonderful. Yeah, it yeah. was. It would be an afternoon of fun. It was usually a Sunday afternoon. I remember that. It was. A f it was a. An, I think I, I remember going once, maybe twice, but the one time. Um, yeah, everybody had a great time. Who doesn't like riding a snowmobile? So uh, they, had a, they had a wonderful time. And it's great when the community, you know, rallies together and gives back in support of, uh, of people with disabilities as well. We're uh, really grateful for um, everything that uh, Chautauqua County residents do to support the work that we do, because we, we wouldn't be able to do it alone. I remember um, you lined up the Post Journal uh, to do an article on the Sunday school class. Uh, yep from Bethel Lutheran Church. I remember we had to get together one evening and some photographer from the Post Journal came over and took a picture of uh, all of us and we had uh, the guy from the church that was the Sunday school teacher, Paul Summers actually. All right, yep. Yeah, so, um, so that was kind of nice, you know, every once in a while uh, you'll, if you think there that something's particularly interesting you would um, have the Post Journal do an article on it. Well, yeah, yeah it's, you know, we like to, we'll, I'll sometimes we'll write our own articles and send them in, but you right. know, it's uh, always, uh, I think, better when a professional journalist can, can take a spin at it who's, who's a better writer than I am. Um, what? We're, we're, we're not professional. Well, you know, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're comp, we can get by, but uh, <laughs> it's great if you can interest, uh, interest the local media into coming out and doing a story, then it's that much better. Because uh, you, know, you also make that connection with that uh, reporter who maybe right. didn't know, uh, know much about you before, and, and they get sort of a deeper appreciation than just having a, a press release sent in about something, so. Yeah. And then uh, we go on a lot of picnics with the guys in the summers, too. Sometimes just one group home goes off by itself, but then uh, we would have group picnics, too, I remember. Uh, we'd sometimes go to the 100-acre lot by the hmm, Jamestown yep. Community College. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm sure the different homes do a lot of their own things. I know most of the homes have a, a family picnic every summer to get the, mm -hmm. the families of the family members of right, the residents there right. to come in. Um, what we've been doing, uh, like maybe about eight years now, is uh, taking a few days in August and bringing 60 to 70 uh, of the individuals we support up to Camp Anyasa. Oh, uh, yes, so you ha yes. They have a, a, a few days of summer camp, and that has just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, do you remember Nancy Ingram at the Resource Center? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I knew her very well. I think I only met her once or twice. Yeah, Nancy but, was one of our... But I uh, used to hear about her. Right, right. Time, yeah. Assistant Executive Director and worked there for 40 years, and Nancy said, you know, this summer camp is probably the best thing that we've ever done. Um, but to you know, see the uh, the look of uh, of joy on people's faces to be able to have an experience going out to camp. I mean, we we have Chautauqua Lake here that uh, most of us uh, I won't say we take it for granted, but if any of us, most of us, if we want to access a lake, we can do it. There's folks with disabilities who've lived here all their lives who've never had the opportunity to get out on Chautauqua Lake. So they go out to camp on Yasa. We have a pontoon boat, and they can go out on that boat. Um, it's great to be able to create those memories for people and those experiences. Right. And we've taken them, I remember we used to go to places like Allegheny yep. State Park. Letchworth. Letchworth, yep. yeah. And then we used to do things like going to museums and things too. Um, you know, like the a Museum of Science in Buffalo and and like that. What's, what's the name of that art museum up there? We w took them there once. Albright Knox. Oh, Albright yep. Knox. Yeah, that was it. I remember going there with them. And, um, yeah, we have a pretty, we have a pretty good um, art program going now at the Resource Center. It's been going for about 10 years. And uh, unfortunately, our, our artist, uh, our art instructor, uh, Kristen McNitt, uh, just she get, we were getting ready to have her second child, and oh. so she just resigned so she could be a, uh, 
full-time uh, mom. Full -time mom, but oh. uh, we understand the, the steps have been taken to keep that art program going. But boy, you know, Kristen was able to bring out the artistic talents in people that, you know, family members who'd known them all their lives had no idea that they could paint and could create things. And uh, Kristen would make it possible to have uh, public exhibits um, in different galleries throughout the county. And uh, it's got, you know, I can, I can draw a stick figure. That's about it. Um, so I can't imagine the, uh, the charge that you would get if, if you're an individual with a disability taking your family member through a, uh, an art exhibit at uh, the Prendergast Library in Jamestown and there's your painting up on the wall and you can say, look, I made this and people are... And people are coming in and coming looking at it. And wanting to buy yes. it. You know, they sell a lot of uh, their paintings as well. So it's, uh, it's just tremendous. Well, actually, Carol, my husband, uh, bought one a picture from somebody that they had painted uh, that's hanging on a wall at our house. Tremendous. Yeah, that's great. So, um, and then other things we uh, did, I remember going on some train rides with mm -hmm. some of the guys from the group home that we worked at. I remember we went a few times on the arcade in Attica train ride. But then I think the one that was the nicest, and this came up in uh, the program with Bob Johnston two weeks ago, uh, I was talking about uh, the one that goes from Titusville, Pennsylvania to, to Oil City. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had brought the guys from the group home we worked at down to go on the train ride. And uh, on the way back on the train ride, we had to stop uh, so that the guys could get out, the guys that ran the train could get out and cut up a tree and move it out <laughs> of the way because they, they deliberately carried a chainsaw with them in case that happened. Makes so, sense. So they would have to uh, cut up the tree and move it out of the way. So that made it a little more interesting. More interesting. Society. But yeah, but that's, you know, that's the kind of thing that uh, the staff at uh, the Resource Center does to go out and uh, take people the people we support out to do different things and give them these uh, wonderful rich experiences that you know you did this how many years ago and you're still talking and remembering about so that's i think that's that's wonderful it's what it's all about yeah it really is so um what else well um would you talk some more about the trainings uh, uh that the 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 staff get well. The staff they go through a, you, uh, a two week two week training, so mm -hmm. it's uh, very it's intense. Uh, it's um, first aid and CPR. That's part of it, but it's also things like you know treating people with respect. Right. And uh, you know that's really what it's all about now is, right. is person centered. Right. You know, it's it's about trying to give the individuals we support the life that they want to want to live. You know, we've done very well for years and years giving people a better life, mm -hmm. but it's been a lot of uh, a lot of that has been uh, programs and services that that you know we choose for them. And now mm -hmm. it's it's really more about having individuals and their families make those decisions about what do they want to do with their lives, what would make their lives the most interesting. And uh, that's that's the direction that we're going now. So we're getting people that have uh, you know people that lived in the group homes for years, and uh, we you know thought they were happy there and, and and liked it there. But you ask them, and they say, "Well, I want to live out on my own." And so we go out and help them find an apartment. And some individuals can uh, live in an apartment by themselves with very minimal support. You know, maybe somebody comes in for a few hours a week to help them if they need it. Um, and that's the thing maybe that, uh, that we need to explain too, is that the Resource Center uh, supports people with a, a complete broad range of the spectrum of, of disabilities. So you have um, folks who, a lot of folks who had come from the institutions as we talked about earlier, um, they may have had uh, very severe intellectual disabilities and physical disabilities, so they really can't you know, toilet themselves, bathe themselves, feed themselves. Um, and then you have uh, folks who are very independent, can live on their own in the community. Maybe they need a little help with things like budgeting, uh, maybe some help with, uh, with uh, learning how to navigate uh, uh, transportation, you know, getting around town and stuff. But, uh, but other than that, they're able to live on their own, you know, cook their own food, get to their job or uh, whatever they're doing during the day if they're volunteering somewhere. Um, so that's where, what the focus is now as we're moving forward is um, helping every individual to uh, choose and be able to lead the life that he or she wants to live. 
I remember um, one time uh, my husband uh, was working for a while at the Benedict Apartments, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember one time I, I dropped him off at work. I'd had to come into Jamestown for something else, and, and I dropped him off at work, and I, when I, I went back to pick him up when, um, when it was time for him to be finished at the end of the evening. And uh, I went there, I got out of the car, and some of the residents were standing around outside, and uh, I told them I was there to pick up my husband, Carol, and I, they let me into the building, I remember. Mm -hmm. And they weren't supposed to, <laughs> but they did. Yeah. Uh, so when I got inside, Carol and whoever else he was working it with said, how did you get in here? And I said, well, some of the guys that live here let me in. And they're going, well, we weren't supposed to. So then after that, I guess word got around to... Uh, some of the administrative staff and um, so they wanted to put on like a learning experience for them where different uh, staff would come around and pretend to be a salesperson or oh, whatever gotcha. and everything okay. but I remember I, I remember hearing that they were going to have you pretend to be a, a peeping Tom or something. That, you know, it was kind of a learning experience. I, you know, no one ever approached me about that, so I missed <laughs> that opportunity. Because I, I heard that somebody was planning on having you come and pretend to be a peeping Tom. Yeah, no, I. You didn't. know, and I'm trying to I'm trying to visualize you of all people. You know peeking into somebody's apartment <laughs> window. I'll do whatever I'm told, but I don't remember, uh, I don't remember having, I, I don't know if that project they, ever got nipped maybe in the they butt never or not. Went yeah. or maybe they never went through that right. learning uh, thing or something. Maybe they just explained to people that they should be more careful right. or something. That's the thing. You know, you know? A lot of folks, uh, you know, whether you have a disability or not, I think most of us tend to be trusting and we don't expect the worst out of people and unfortunately there are people out there that uh, take advantage of that take advantage or do harm and that's you know that's one of the things that, that the staff uh, at the resource center has to is responsible for too is you know making sure you know protecting the welfare of, uh, of the folks that we serve and uh, you know some people you have to let people make their own mistakes sometimes too and you try to let them do that without be in a position where they're going to endanger themselves as well. So life is about learning through uh, successes and uh, and failures, and um, that's for that, that goes for everybody. Yeah, um, we uh, you know one of the things that we do too. Uh, I think probably when you were still there, we started putting on some of these some big special events every year. So we did the basketball tournament downtown, oh, yeah, I which heard was about Gus those. Macker for yeah. a while. It's now Street yeah. Jam. Uh, we have an event called Laurel Run, which takes place in July, and that was started by a couple of parents who have a daughter with Down syndrome mm -hmm. who's been at the Resource Center for 30 years probably. Uh -huh. um, we have a, a walk for, uh, called Step Up for Autism in September um, that we uh, invite everybody to come to, but it really is about focusing awareness and support on uh, people who are on the autism spectrum. So uh, we have a lot of opportunities for the community to come out and support what we do either by, you know, they can play in the basketball tournament, run in the, in the Laurel Run, or, or walk, in the, uh, walk in the Step Up for Autism uh, event that we have. So we do a lot, you know, we're out in the community a lot and trying to be as public as we can to, uh, to uh, let people know what we do and uh, let people know that we always need their support. And it's good. Along those lines, I'll make a little plug that uh, the Resource Center is that we're a, a membership organization and um, anybody can become a member of the Resource Center if they pay their $10 annual membership dues. Uh, what we do as a thank you for that is we give people a, uh, a discount card, a membership card that they can present at local businesses, but it's about, probably about 20 of them, and they can get uh, a discount. So then these are discounts that they can use uh, over and over again throughout the year. It's not like it's a coupon. Oh, that really? You get just, to use just just once. for paying a $10 membership yep. fee? Yeah. So if you, for instance, well, that's a pretty good deal, isn't you go, it? Yeah. If you get one of the one of the discounts is 10% uh, off at Applebee's. So if you go to Applebee's once or twice, you've made up your uh, your uh, your membership fee for the year. So. Um, if anybody, again, if anybody's interested in learning more about the Resource Center, we do have a website. It's resourcecenter.org, and they can go there, and there's lots of information about our organization, but also information on becoming a member, if that's something that somebody wants to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. It's nice. It's always nice to get 
more people into the fold, so to speak, and making yeah. them aware of, of uh, what we do. We do have a, a monthly um, uh, electronic newsletter that we send out so people can go on the website and sign up to get that if they're interested in, in learning more about, uh, about what we do. It's, uh, it's a big organization. You know, as I said, we have 1,600 employees. Uh, and you have a board out. of directors. We have a board of directors. It's 15 people that are volunteers. Um, about half of them are, uh, f have a family member with a developmental disability, and then the other half are people, uh, professionals from the community. And they uh, meet monthly and, uh, with our executive director, Denise Jones, and uh, kind of help guide the organization. It's, it's, a, it's a big job. It's, you know, with, uh, our budget is probably in the neighborhood of $80 million. Um, you know, a lot of that comes from the, uh, the government contracts that we do. I think we're uh, uh, anticipated to do $36 million of business with the federal government this year. Uh, wow. Through, I mean, in fact, yeah, it's a lot of uh, something that I think not a lot of people are aware of, the, of what a, a robust manufacturing uh, operation the Resource Center is. You know, we do have a, uh, a facility in Buffalo as well that we do some work at because there are times when we have too much work to be able to handle in, at mm -hmm. our facilities in Jamestown and Dunkirk and need to be able to do some stuff in, in Buffalo as well. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wanted to mention um, is from my experience of having worked at the Resource Center, especially that I worked in a group home, is that it has a family feeling to it. Sure, sure. I think especially folks who have worked at, uh, at the Resource Center for a long time and really get to know the individuals that we support, it is like a, a member of your family and that uh, is good and bad. You celebrate their triumphs and uh, their successes. But when somebody passes, uh, that can be very devastating. It's to, like uh, it feels like losing a family member. It really does. Absolutely, um, we've been doing something for um, I think the last six years. In January, we have an event called the Celebration of Life, and we uh, honor those individuals in the living in the homes who passed away during the previous year. And they have a slideshow up about them, and uh, someone from hospice comes and says some words, and then we invite uh, the families. Uh, to come in and uh, that is very somber for about 15 minutes and then it's a celebration and then we turn it into a, uh, a dance and a party so that oh. we're, we're remembering oh, the wow, good times yeah. about it and it's, uh, it's something that's it's an opportunity for, for everybody to, uh, to remember uh, their, their friends and loved ones who uh, are no longer with us. Yeah, a, a hospice uh, has a tree lighting ceremony yep. every year for the people who died that year that were hospice patients. Yes. So. Yeah. What else would you like to discuss, Gail? <laughs> well, um, we could talk about uh, some of the other fun things that I remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you have a rich history at, at TRC, yeah, um, so. I remember, uh, I remember we, at one time, we had a, um, there was a retired Buffalo Bill football player that was the uh, recreation director okay. for a while one time. I think that was before my time, but I'm not, you know, yeah, I don't remember that. But. Possibly. But I remember I didn't know it at the time. The whole time I was working, he was only there a year or two or something like that. And the whole time I was working with him, I never knew that he was supposed to be a celebrity. And, so that was kind of funny. I, I've always wondered afterwards if he wondered why I didn't make a big fuss over And he never said anything to you, sounds he like. He never told me. He never, did you know I was one of the Buffalo Bills? Or no, he was humble. He That's a good thing. He to me, yeah. but, you know, uh, he never said, uh, said that he was a celebrity or anything. But uh, that, w that was kind of a fun thing. I bet. I bet. Yeah, we, uh, well, you were there when we had the, uh, the swimming pool. Up at, uh, oh, up yeah. at one of our. Do, do uh, you not still? No, they took this. They took this one, but they kept having problems with it, and they needed to open up that space for uh, for more more day programming. Oh, I but see. But for for our viewers, it was a swimming pool with the floor could rise up <laughs> so that individuals in a wheelchair could be rolled out into the pool, so they could be able to be able to go swimming. So right, I remember. Yeah, it's pretty I innovative thing that. back yeah. then. Yeah, and people loved that. So now, uh, when people need to go swimming or want to go swimming. Uh, at the Resource Center, they go down to the Y or the Boys and Girls Club or the JCC. Well, that's good that those uh, 
venues are available for Absolutely. them to use. Absolutely. Yeah, we're pretty, uh, we do a lot of uh, swimming, uh, a lot of those opportunities are done through uh, very tightly connected with Special Olympics, obviously, because a lot of the individuals who we support uh, take part in Special Olympics. So. Yeah, the Special Olympics is always a really big deal. Um, you know, it's a, a big day. Right. You know, it's a really special event for them. They yep. really enjoy that a lot. Uh, yeah, the one that takes place at school. But there's, you know, competitions that go on throughout the year. You know, they're traveling um, all over the place in, in throughout New York City and the East Coast. And it, we uh, have had people who go to the World uh, Special Olympics Games. In uh, We had an individual who went, uh, got to go into the Ireland a few years ago to take part in the World Special Olympic Games. And how cool is that? So to represent your country. Uh, so that's, uh, Special Olympics is great, and we're, uh, we're, we're very happy to be involved with them. Um, I guess uh, there are people who would like to know uh, the locations of some of these things. Of the Resource Center? Yeah. Well, we, we, we have about 45 locations throughout the county. Now, 30 of those are group homes. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the homes are in the Jamestown Lakewood area. There is one home in Westfield. Uh, we have one home in Dunkirk and two in Fredonia. But the rest are down in the greater Jamestown area. Mm -hmm. um, our bigger facilities, there, if people are familiar with Jamestown, um, Jones and Gifford Avenue, uh, down by right. the uh, down by the outlet, that is where uh, our big facility. We've been for thirty, probably forty years now. Um, uh, we have a day program there, a clinic, and then there's a building out back where the work center is. On East Second Street, we have our health services, our primary care, our dental office is there, and our mental health and counseling offices are there. The resource center's administrative offices have been located in the old Celeron School on Dunham Avenue uh, since 2009. And then up in Dunkirk, we have our, our biggest facility is on Lakeshore Drive. Uh, it's kind of in front of, uh, in front of the National Fuel Plant on the lake. And in that building, we have uh, a day program for people with disabilities, uh, dental offices, again, the clinic with the occupational therapy, the physical therapy. Do they have more than one dentist at the Resource Center? Yes, in Jamestown we have two. In Dunkirk, I think our dentist, we have one now. We had another one who left after being with us for several years, so I think we're recruiting a new dentist right now. Oh, I see. So yeah, so we have multiple dentists, and we're undergoing a, a big um, expansion at our Jamestown site on uh, East 2nd Street, and we're um, going to be adding uh, several uh, dental rooms in that building, so we're probably going to need to hire another dentist. But there's a lot right. of folks who uh, who can't find uh, can't find a dentist uh, in Chautauqua, especially we're one of the few providers that will take Medicaid. I mean, we take almost oh. all insurances, but we do take oh, Medicaid. Yeah. And so folks who uh, who are on Medicaid and having difficulty finding a dentist elsewhere will usually end up at the resource center. So, and then we have one more big facility on East Chestnut Street in Dunkirk. It's near the Purina plant and the uh, Lakeshore Humane Society for folks who are familiar with uh, that section of the city. And that is where our uh, Dunkirk Work Center is located. So those are, the, those are the big facilities that we have that I think people would be most uh, familiar with. Okay, um, d are pets allowed in any of the group homes? Yes, pets are allowed. And I'm not sure if they're allowed in all of the group homes, but some of them. I certainly know that. The, the people who have them probably have to um, be able to take care of them, right? Right. And I think, you know, obviously if somebody living at the home has an allergy to a cat or a dog, one of the other residents, then you're not going to have an animal there. But I know mm -hmm. there, I've been to some homes where, at least some where I've seen cats there. So I know that there are animals in some of the homes, but I'm sure. Are I'm they sure. required to be like small dogs? I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I can't recall seeing a dog in one of our homes. So I've mm -hmm. seen cats, but I don't, oh, know what, I don't know what the regulations are. Okay. And I think I've seen people having fish, so in fish tanks, obviously. Um, are, are intellectually challenged people uh, learning how to use computers? Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's the big thing uh, you know, going forward. Um, you see that there's technology that can allow an individual with a disability to really be able to live on his or her own. You know, they can get a, a smartphone or a tablet or something that they can program a lot of the uh, things in that you know, if they need reminders about things. 
Um, I remember seeing a video about an individual with Down syndrome, and he uh, lived in his own home, uh, had a dog, and he had uh, his tablet that uh, would remind him to take the dog out, uh, would help him uh, remember how to get to the bus so he could get to his job. Uh, he was having his girlfriend over for dinner, and his, I think his, his sister maybe lived nearby. So he called up his sister, and she kind of talked him through how to make some pasta so he could impress his date. So uh, yes, so people are, are use computers all the time uh, in the day programs and at the homes. But um, you know, going forward, um, to be able to uh, to really enhance somebody's independence, uh, it's, I think that probably the possibilities are endless. Um, what do the daycare centers provide? We have uh, several. We don't have a daycare. We have, it's called a day habilitation. Oh, day program. hab. Yeah. And so we have there's five of them. There's the one, the big one on Jones and Gifford Avenue. We have one on Fluvanna Avenue in that old Ames Plaza in Jamestown for people that are familiar uh, with that side of town. We have one on Hazeltine Avenue in, uh, in Jamestown and then one up on Harris Avenue where the recreation center mm -hmm. was with the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And then in Dunkirk we mm -hmm. have a, a day habilitation program. Uh, those programs, um, are people can learn skills of daily living. Um, they, uh, as, with, as your husband Carl knows, uh, they get to have the opportunity to go out into the community and uh, experience different things, volunteer at different places. Um, some of the folks that are in the day program will also uh, be in our work program. So maybe they're in the day program in the morning and go over into the work center in the afternoon or vice versa. Um, but they're not, they're not daycare uh, per se. Um, are there people who are both involved in the day head program and the work area? Yep, yep. There's some people that absolutely do both. And, um, you know, as we were talking earlier about the uh, desire for the state to have uh, people have the opportunity to experience community-based uh, employment, that we're going to be seeing more and more uh, individuals going out and at least giving uh, community-based employment a try folks in the day programs. But they're very active in the, you know, Carl can talk about it, but they're very active in the day programs. Um, love going out in the community and doing stuff, uh, going to uh, uh, libraries and schools. Uh, we do a lot of uh, making bookmarks for schools and libraries so that a lot of the craft projects that they'll be involved with uh, will uh, benefit uh, other uh, organizations in the, in the area as well, so. I remember that we used to uh go bowling the group homes all of the group homes th uh, would meet at a certain bowling oh, okay. alley and we'd all bowl together on saturday afternoons that's sometimes. great i know that i think special olympics has bowling on saturday morning so i know, oh, that, do I they? know they uh, they get together and, and go bowling at that point too so yeah yeah that was always a lot of fun was taking them it is a lot of, as we said it's a, it can be a lot of fun working at the resource center Absolutely. it really can that's we used great. to go to a lot of movies. I, mm -hmm. I remember uh, that one we went to about the boy with the BB gun, the wa wanted a BB gun for oh, Christmas. Oh, Christmas Story? Yeah, that yeah. was the name of it. Yeah, Ralphie. Ralphie, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a classic. I remember one time I, was, I had to take some guys out to the movie theater, and the movie was... Uh, I hadn't heard it ahead of time. We didn't know that it was going to be a really, really long movie, and I took them some of them, part of the group, uh, to the movie theater to see Dances with Wolves. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's a really long movie. It just goes on for hours. And <laughs> I imagine they were probably getting pretty worried about us mm -hmm. back at the group <laughs> home. <laughs> you were know. gone so long. <laughs> you know, we, that was back before we all had uh, cell phones and things. Sure. You know, so I in. couldn't just call a group home and say, oh, by the way, the movie's still on. Yeah. You know, and yet we wanted to make sure we got to see it all. Sure. But, uh, Speaking of movies, um, something we've been doing for about a year now uh, at the Reg Linnae, uh Center for the Arts in Jamestown, once a month they will have what we call a sensory friendly movie. And it's typically on Saturday afternoons. And it's, uh, they'll pick a movie that they think would appeal to a, a wide range of, of people. 
but they uh, will keep the sound low and they'll, they won't turn the lights all the way down uh, so that people with uh, sensory sensitivities can go and enjoy a movie without having it be too dark or too loud. And also, you know, if, there, if you have a, uh, an individual who um, maybe is prone to uh, loud outbursts or something, so oh. they're, they're, that maybe wouldn't be, you'd be uncomfortable taking that person to a regular theater because it would be too disruptive for some of the other moviegoers. Um, at these sensory movies, people are free to you know, make as much noise as they want, to get up and walk around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, really, it's really been a, a nice partnership that we've had with the, with the Reg. How can people find out more about the Resource Center? They can always call me. Um, my name again, Steve Watterson, uh, and the Resource Center's main number is 483-2344. Um, and, or you can go to the website, again, resourcecenter.org, and uh, if you go up under the, look for information there, but if you want to ask me a specific question, there's, you know, our phone number is on there, but also you can go to the uh, contact list, and under key staff, you'll find my name. You can just shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that somebody might have. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, um Talk about, let's see, talk about employment and something about how the public can become employees. Oh, boy. Well, you know, that's yeah. a, a great question. We, uh, you know, with 1,600 employees, um, there, you can imagine there are always jobs to fill because mm -hmm. people are, you know, coming and going. So uh, we are always looking for, uh, for people that want to... Uh, improve the lives of people with disabilities by coming and working for the Resource Center. We do have a great benefit package. Um, we uh, conduct interviews uh, pretty much on a weekly basis. So somebody that wants to come in and, and get a job at, at TRC or learn about it can come in and talk to somebody. Uh, we do uh, require everybody to fill out our online employment application so they can go to our website and right on the website, is a, there'll be a prompt to hit on job board, and if they click that, it'll take it to the application. They can fill out that application, and someone will get in touch with you pretty quickly. Okay, so if a person doesn't have a computer? Uh, they can come down to uh, the Resource Center, and we have a computer set up at our administrative offices on, uh, at the old Celeron School. Oh, so they can fill out the application yep, right there. Come in and do it right in the lobby, yep, absolutely. And while they're there, they probably would be able to talk with somebody from our uh, recruitment office as well. Is there a, a foundation, a, a Resource Center we foundation? We do. We have a, 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 it's called the TRC Foundation. It's been around since 1995. And it exists to raise money to uh, support some of the unfunded things that the Resource Center does. You know, I guess we haven't talked about this. A lot of uh, the funding that we get is reimbursement for services provided. So the state and federal government, you know, reimburses for services we provide to the people with disabilities we support. And that covers, you know, your basic needs. But, you know, people want to do more fun things than just their, the basic needs. So uh, TRC Foundation exists to raise money that can be used to support uh, individuals with disabilities and their families uh, to pay for those unfunded things. And some of them can be, you know, fun things going on, on trips. Uh, some of it is, uh, you know, particularly for people um, with disabilities living on their own in the community. Uh, they can have a lot of challenges and sometimes just a matter of a few dollars can make the difference of whether they're able to remain independent or be able to get to work. So the foundation uh, exists to be able to provide funding to assist those people. Um, the foundation uh, has awarded, since it was started in 1995, we've awarded over $900,000 in grants to people with disabilities and we just had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and awarded, I think, $78,000 uh, for this year. So if anybody is interested in learning more about uh, TRC Foundation, again, they can go to the Resource Center's website and there'll be a link to take them to uh, the TRC Foundation. But the Foundation's great um, and uh, most of the fundraising that we do for the Resource Center, we really encourage those dollars to go into TRC Foundation. That's good. Um now, um, is there anything you want to uh, say? You know, we're um, down to the last few minutes here. Is there anything you want to add? No, I, you know, it's, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on and talk about uh, the Resource Center. I think 
if you don't have a family member with a disability uh, and don't have uh, any other reason to know the Resource Center, you know, our name doesn't say what we're about, really, so you may, uh, may not have a clear understanding of what we do. So I hope by being here today I've had an opportunity to uh, educate some folks about uh, what the Resource Center is all about. And um, if they would like to learn more, uh, again, please reach out to me. I'm happy to, uh, to talk to anybody. And uh, we can always use support, whether that's somebody who wants to come and volunteer uh, at one of our homes, uh, help out with one of the special events. Um, it's, it's very fulfilling work, as you know, Gail, from, uh, from working with individuals with disabilities. And uh, I, I would recommend that everybody uh, give it a try in terms of volunteering or, or working with them. Yeah, it's a really interesting job, um, kind of work to do, um, and it does have a family feeling. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it while I was there. Absolutely. So, um, well, we're down to the last two minutes here, so I'm going to sign off. Okay, thank you, Gail. Um, oh, you're welcome, and thank you for coming on. My pleasure. And uh, we have some interesting programs in the coming weeks. Uh, Next time around, it's going to be Ann Jackson from the Beaded Forest uh, to uh, talk about uh, high-quality wooden items and jewelry that they make. And then the following time after that, we're having a deer hunter. Uh, it's, he, it's the guy that was in the newspaper the day before Christmas for getting a 17-point buck. So he's going to give you deer hunters some tips on being successful at deer hunting. And then we're having a doctor of naturopathy, uh, Dr. Hilton from Erie, Pennsylvania, um, after, after him. So uh, we've got some really interesting people lined up here. Um, I just wanted to say uh, to all of you viewers, uh, be happy and prosperous. And I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>